everyone. I've got a great video for you today and I want to thank Cricut for sponsoring it. Let's go ahead and get into our first one. All right, so DIY number one has a few parts. We've got some signs back and forth and some little bags we're going to jump into. First, we're going to start off with this rectangle piece of wood. <laughs> uh, I actually got it, I think, for free at the hardware store. It was scrap. Somebody got it cut, didn't want it. I don't know. I didn't have to pay for it, so I was ecstatic about that. It's a little warped, but that's okay. We are going to stain it. Well, not we. I didn't have a mouse in my pocket, but you know what I mean. I am going to stain it in Minwax Ebony. I kind of just loved, liked the idea of doing something a little less traditional, I guess. You know, a black stain isn't something I would normally think of when I think of Christmas. You know, I think of like, you know, woods and very rusticiness. And man, oh man, did I have to stir that <laughs> stain up. <laughs> Sorry, I kept all of that in there. You didn't really need to see it, but that's all right. So I've got a glove on, of course, and I am just taking a little piece of a microfiber cloth, dipping it in and applying my stain. That is a unicorn dust design tip. Uh, that was a tip I picked up from Sammy uh, some time ago. Uh, that's how she did her stain. And I was like, oh, that looks like a good idea. And I did it. And I'm like, I like it. So I'm going to use it too. Mind you, I had already sanded down this board pretty good. I think I went all the way down to like a 320 grit sandpaper. And when I do that, I also sand down all of my corners and edges to give them a little bit more of like a rounded finished look. I apply that stain on both sides, by the way. Now in Cricut Design Space, I am going to start off with a rectangular shape of the board I have. And uh, just to give up me an idea of kind of like what sizing to go for. And when uh, you do this, you have to like size it down so you can see like the whole thing. <laughs> and we are going to just kind of start off with some writing. That's mostly what we're doing on this side. Okay, we're doing it mostly on the other side too. But this is the basic idea is we are going to do the McCartney family in one font towards the top. And I'll just kind of go through, pick out my font that I want to use. And it always takes me so long to pick because there's so many to choose from. And I just love it. So if you don't have the Cricut Design Space access, uh, take a look at it. Even if you wanted just to do it for a few months, it's really cool because you don't have to hunt around for different fonts and everything like that. You just have them all right there. You download the ones you want and you're good to go. So I'll have the one that I used on all of the different projects, all the different fonts and stuff listed for you below. And I'll link this project for you too, in case you want to make one for yourself and use kind of like the template I set up for you, so to speak. Uh, now you can see here, I changed my rectangle to kind of like a brown tone. I wanted to get a little bit more of a feel for what it looks like, even though my wood is more of a darker brown. This is just the kind of color we have. So we've got the McCartney family countdown to Christmas. And I got this inspiration from something I found on Pinterest. And I absolutely love it. So once I've gotten the fonts, I like I said, I wanted to go with a little different things. And I'm going to look for some greenery. I didn't like just the plain greenery that they had available. So I ended up picking one that has the word Christmas in it. But that's all right. I'm going to show you how to get rid of the Christmas part. Now you'll see here, it actually made it really easy because it was different layers. Sometimes you don't have that option. So I'll show you another way is you go into the contour. This one's really easy. I just went in and hid the contour that I didn't want. And I'll do that on each side of my little leafy, garlandy, greenery stuff. And I'm going to give it a little different of an angle. So that is why I decided to go ahead and make two different ones because I wanted to be able to make it fit the shape of my words. If you didn't know you could do that, that's an option too. Now those are also coming out of the Cricut Design Space. So if you have access, that is also something you might want to do. Uh, if you have, you know, the monthly subscription for access and everything like that. It's just really handy to have, makes things so easy, so fast, where you're not sitting in there looking for designs somewhere else, buying them on something else. 
and whatnot. So I am going to change it to where it's not going to have all those colors. And I did that, but I went back because I needed to duplicate it because I have two sides, obviously, of this sign. And we're going to use, some, we're going to do something on both sides. This is actually for my sister-in-law and she doesn't have a ton, ton of space um, to store things. So I wanted to make her something that fits, that will work for both sides. She has a couple little kids. So I have one side is going to be for her for Christmas stuff. And one side is going to be for every day. And so I've got a look what I made and the countdown for Christmas. I'm going to go ahead and hide those rectangles <laughs> because I don't want to cut them. I actually did that one time by accident. I didn't hide it and it cut it on my, <laughs> on my vinyl, but it's all right. Uh, I'm making them, I want to cut it at two different, um, in two different goes, if that makes sense. Like I want it to cut at not, not go two different things. I wanted it to cut it all at one time so that I can kind of get the most out of my vinyl. So there it is. You see, it's going to cut all at one time and I'm going to be cutting it with my Cricut Maker 3. So I get to go without the mat. It's so, so cool that <laughs> I don't have to deal with the mat all the time. It makes it so much easier, so much faster, and it cuts a lot faster too. So if you need an idea for Christmas um, for yourself, or you want to suggest something to somebody else, the Cricut Maker 3 is really, really awesome. Uh, so we've got it all set up in design space, and we're going to go to cutting it. What it is going to do is it's going to check the vinyl roll. I have a gigantic roll of vinyl, and it's already cut out for me. I figured I wouldn't show you the machine because it's it's the Cricut machine. You've seen it a million times. It blinks the buttons that you need to push. I do want to show you that little handy gadget. That is how I went in and actually did all of my weeding. It lights up, it backlights, and it makes it really easy, especially on the white vinyl. This vinyl is the removable vinyl. I prefer to use the removable vinyl when I'm doing stencils. Sometimes I'll even use it on a sign if I know it's not going to be something that's outside. So this one, we're like I said, we're making a stencil. I've already applied my transfer tape to it and I am just pulling it all back uh, to get my, you know, stencil ready to go. I put down a strip of tape. I don't suggest doing it. It ended up not helping me that much and it ended up giving me a little bit of a line. So skip it if, you know, skip it if you can. <laughs> uh, so I've got these transfer or the stencil down ready to go. And we're going to start painting. I'm going to do Adirondack white on the top part. The countdown to Christmas will be in crimson and the little uh, greenery part will be in fern. Uh, the first one, the white one is from Folk Art. The other two are Waverly. So we're just going to take the chalk paint and we're just going to dab it all on straight up and down. Try not to go side to side too much because you don't want to risk getting it underneath your vinyl. I've not had a significant problem with that before, just based on how I do it. Now, depending on the wood, sometimes you will get some bleed through. I have heard, I don't believe I've tried it, but I've heard what you can do is you can actually do a coat of Mod Podge first to minimize that. Or if your sign is painted, you can do the same paint color that you're doing. You know, like if, if the sign was black, you would put black down and then you would use the actual color that you're looking to make your writing. Also, you might want to tape your stuff down because if you're like me, you end up with a tiny little dab on the actual wood instead of being cautious and just, or, or just taping it down in the beginning. I'm a messy painter, so that's what I should have done in the beginning. <laughs> uh, I never learn. I think I actually messed up on the other side too, <laughs> a little spot. All right, so for everyone's favorite part is we're going to start peeling it all back. But here's a little surprise for you. So I let this sit on uh, to dry for probably a good six to eight hours. Apparently, you shouldn't do that because it ended up drying on the uh, the paint dr dried completely on the vinyl, and it ended up and it didn't really mess up the actual um, the actual sign itself, but it got 
a lot of a mess everywhere. So you see all that little bits of paint that is just going absolutely everywhere. Uh, yeah, that's the dried up paint on the vinyl. So don't, uh, don't let it dry that long because it's going to make a mess. <laughs> and it did pull at a couple of little spots, but I'll just go in and fix it. Not a big deal. This is definitely my error. Don't do that. Um, I usually, what I do is I dry the paint with my heat gun, do my second layer, dry it a little bit with my heat gun and maybe let it sit for a little bit of time. Not very long at all though. Usually, uh, I won't do that again because this was a mess. All right, so I've got these really cute little muslin cloth bags, and we're going to put some numbers on them for our countdown ca uh, countdown side of our sign, and they're super adorable. They're from Amazon, and we're going to use the infusible ink. It works a lot like the heat transfer vinyl, but it actually puts the ink in the material. So I've got my numbers here all ready to go, and we're going to print them out, and on this one, make sure you remember to mirror your stuff. I do have to use a mat on these and I'm going to use the same thing, the Maker 3 to cut them out. It does a perfect job. And when you're putting it on your mat, you're just going to make sure you're putting actually like the design side up. You know what I mean? Like not like you would on heat transfer vinyl. That's where a big difference is. And you'll just fold your, you know, pull your uh, mat off of the infusible ink sheet. And then we're just going to trim around because nobody wants to waste this stuff. Uh, we're just going to trim around all of our numbers, save what you can, and I will cut all of them apart so I don't accidentally end up making a number that doesn't exist, or at least not in our countdown. When you're removing your excess, it's actually pretty easy to do it without a tool, in my opinion. Uh, you know, just use what God gave you kind of thing. And you're just peeling it away. You can not really bend it, but you can kind of roll it to make it kind of break that, uh, the seam, I guess that's what we'll call it at least in, in here today, we're going to call it that. And once they're all ready to go, we're going to heat press them on to do that. You'll actually just put it down. You put a couple of pieces of butcher block in between the layers of different things. So in between the bag on top of the bag, you'll heat press it. Um, all of those settings can be found on Cricut's website. At first, I thought I didn't do it long enough, so I did it again. Just go by what they tell you because I thought that sounded like it was going to be too long, and I think it ended up being 120 seconds, which felt like a really long time, but they're right. That's how long you should do it. Uh, and you're just going to peel it back as more of like a warm, not like immediately, but more when it's warm. Make sure you remove your excess off of your letters because if, or your numbers, because if you don't, <laughs> this is what happens. Oh my gosh. I did it and I was like, wait a minute. I knew this didn't feel right. And that's why it didn't feel right. But then I was curious. I'm like, well, can you use them two times? Cause there still looks like there's something there. So this is what happens if you use it more than one time. It shows up, but not as vibrant. So maybe you can get away from with it depending on the design it looks okay i i'll be honest i left it i i made this one and i made another one for the five but there you can see kind of the difference between a one-time pressed and a, tw a two-time pressed <laughs> so just make sure you remove your excess stuff and you don't forget like i did on that one it's okay though i ended up fixing it and now we're just gonna go on the other side of our sign because like I said, uh, I don't remember if I told you. Uh, so my sister-in-law does not have a ton of storage available in her home. So I know when I make something for her, it either has to be something that can go up on a wall and stay there or something that has a reversible side. And y'all know I love making my reversible stuff. Now we're going to add the hardware. I don't show you a lot of detail on this just because it is different depending on, you know, on you what you have this is what I have on hand is I have these little screw down uh, they're like little circles almost like what you would use for an ornament that's gonna be on the bottom part to actually put some string through to hang things on and then on the top I'm actually gonna use like a D ring uh, that's screwed into the sign I'll link it for you below from Amazon in case you're curious but here's how it all turned out on the one side and then here with the other side the little art display super cute 
I love them and I think she's gonna love them too. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Just the one project because it was rather involved. Uh, thanks again, Cricut, for sponsoring today's video. I'll have some links for you below for Cricut as well if you want to check out the shop. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you next time.